Hi guys, welcome back to New Church Nation. I'm Ange, and today we are going to be making the most beautiful, delicious buffalo chicken tacos you've ever had in your life. But we're doing buffalo style tacos. Oh my gosh. Let's give the angels a moment to sing. I know, I'm a nut. Stay tuned! We're doing tacos, we're doing tacos. It's not even Tuesday. Guess what? Who cares? These tacos are good Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. If I could eat these tacos every single day, I would eat them. I would put this taco up against any taco. And Lord knows I've eaten far too many tacos in my life. Guilty. Okay, so I love tacos. And it's not even Tuesday, who cares? Don't judge me. And since I was born and raised in the home of the chicken wing, that makes me an expert on pretty much anything chicken wing related. Fun fact about buffalo, we don't call them buffalo wings. You know why? Because we're the home of the buffalo wing. We don't have to announce our location, they're just wings. Another fun fact, we don't do ranch. We love blue cheese. Blue cheese on chicken wings or boneless chicken wings or any type of buffalo anything is really the only way to go. You don't go to like a local sports bar and order wings with ranch. You just don't do that. And if you're doing that, you're doing it in secret. These tacos aren't just good. They're like slamming. They're, they're slamming. 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 Thank you so much for supporting Nutrition Nation. Make sure that you share this with your friends and family, anybody who's gluten-free and plant-based in your life or anybody who isn't, because really, honestly, these recipes are for everybody. They are so delicious. Please don't forget to like this video if you liked it, and I mean, give it a thumbs down if you don't. That's okay. I mean, not everybody's got to like it. I completely understand if you don't. <sighs> Just kidding. Make sure that you hit that like button, make sure that you hit that subscribe button, and make sure that you hit that bell next to the subscribe button so that you get alerted every single time I post a new video. Please comment down below because I love hearing from you, and please tell me if you've tried this recipe. In fact, put down in the comments, gluten-free, plant-based is life. And then that way I know you made it and it was absolutely delicious. So come on, come on, come cook with me. To begin this recipe, I suggest making the blue cheese first. That way we can get it into the refrigerator and it has time to sit and meld all the flavors together and get nice and chilled. So I'm going to start this recipe with one cup of gluten-free vegan mayonnaise. And to that I'm going to add the juice of one large lemon and the juice of one lime. I'm also going to add two capfuls of apple cider vinegar and I recommend utilizing the Bragg's version with the mother as the health benefits have proven to be pretty prevalent. We're going to mix this around and just kind of get all of the juice, all of the wet liquids incorporated with the mayonnaise. This does take a few minutes and you kind of have to be careful with this not to throw it out of the bowl. So you'll see me kind of mixing this slowly at first and then going into more of a whipping motion towards the end. It's important to note here that the reason why I'm adding vinegar and lemon and lime juice to this mixture is because the tanginess of those items are really what's going to give this vegan gluten-free mayonnaise that, that blue cheese tang that you're looking for in regular blue cheese. And here I'm going to add two teaspoons of onion powder and I'm going to add two teaspoons of garlic powder and I'm going to add one teaspoon of nutritional yeast now nutritional yeast is a really great 
source of B12. It also is a very key ingredient because it gives food the cheesy flavor, which obviously you need with blue cheese. Once that's incorporated, I'm gonna add a little bit of salt to taste. Um, I am using Himalayan salt here. And I'm also going to add some freshly cracked pepper. Now this does two things. One, it adds great flavor to the blue cheese and gives it a little bit of that heaty tang that you're looking for. But once it sits in the fridge for a while, it actually kind of turns a bluish hue. And so this gives you the thought process when you look at it as if it's blue cheese crumbles inside of the sauce. So it's really key here. Um, I add a considerable amount because I really want that bluish hue when you look at it to have your eyes think that it looks like blue cheese. Now here what I've done is I've taken a half portion of extra firm tofu and I've wrapped it in a paper towel. This is actually the second paper towel I wrapped it in. I squeezed it pretty heavily because I want to get as much of that moisture out of it as I possibly can. You really want to start with the driest tofu that you possibly can start with. I'm going to start with about half of that half. I add it slowly just because depending on how crumbly I want it, if you want really chunky blue cheese, you can add a ton more. I kind of like it like a medium to a chunky blue cheese. So I'm going to add this portion first. And as I crumble it, I'm trying to crumble it as little as I can. I don't want you to eat the blue cheese and get huge chunks in your mouth. I want you to get, you know, just a small chunk in your mouth tofu doesn't have any real taste it will automatically soak up whatever flavors that you basically mix it with so what having this sit in the fridge is going to do is all of that tofu is going to soak up all of those different ingredients that you put into this gluten-free vegan mayo and those crumbles are then going to taste like blue cheese and it works really really well here it really tricks your mind into thinking that you're you're eating real blue cheese so once I get all that crumbled I'm gonna kind of mix this up a little sternly I actually want to break them up a little bit more I, again I don't want large chunks in here the, the tofu is not the feature of this sauce it is merely just to give your mind the thought process that there's blue cheese crumbles in there the real star of this sauce is the actual mayo and and the ingredients to the mayo because it really tastes like blue cheese and I've obviously decided here I want to add just a little bit more however I am not going to use the entire half of the tofu because for us this is as crumbly as I want it again you can add or remove as much as you want this is completely your choice and your preference here it doesn't change the taste at all again it's a texture thing so once I get all of that mixed up, at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a moment and I'm going to taste it. It's because I go really, really soft on the salt to begin with. Because anytime you're adding acidity to something, vinegar and or lemon juice or lime juice can actually give your mind the thought process that something's saltier than it is. So I go really, really light on the salt to begin with. And I've noticed here that it needs a little bit more salt. And I'm going to try it again because I want to make sure it's perfect before I put it into the fridge. Now it's also important to note here that it's completely subjective of whether or not you want you need to add more ingredients. Um, if your lemon was smaller and it wasn't on the larger side you might need to add more acidity. Right here I had a few smaller lemons I need to add a little more acidity, so I'm going to throw a little bit more vinegar in there. I prefer to make this about five to six hours before. If you can make this the night before, it's even better. It's unbelievable the similarities to real blue cheese. And, and honestly, a lot of people that have eaten my food that are not vegan, they're not plant-based, they're not gluten-free, have said, wow, that was great blue cheese, what brand is it? And I've you know, had to explain to them it's homemade and it's vegan and gluten-free and their eyes just kind of go wide. They can't believe how close to the real thing that it is. So I'm getting this into a plastic container and I'm going to lid that and get that into the refrigerator so that it has time to marinate. Let's get started on our cauliflower. Now cauliflower comes in all different shapes and sizes. This is about a medium cauliflower. 
This recipe is going to make two heads of cauliflower. However, for the reasons of the video, I'm just gonna show you cutting up one. So when you clean your cauliflower, you wanna make sure you get all the leaves off first to expose all of the stems underneath so that you can easily cut those. You really wanna cut as close to the head of cauliflower as you can. I really don't want the stems in there whatsoever. All right, so now you're gonna just kind of place your knife in and you can see how removing the leaves, now you can kind of see where the head of the cauliflower meets the stem. And you're gonna cut as close to that head as you can without dislodging all of the different arms of the cauliflower because you want some larger pieces to start with so that you can cut them to the size you want them. And I'm just gonna get all of this cauliflower cut up. While I'm doing this, I'll just kind of give you a few tips here. Like I said, this recipe is enough to make two heads of cauliflower, which is going to be enough for about six to eight people. Um, if you've watched my other videos, you'll know that I have a larger family, so I'm always making my recipes to suit six to eight people or six people with a few leftovers. Um, if you are only making this recipe for two to four people, I would do one head of cauliflower and I would half all of the other recipes that I'm showing you today. Once all that cauliflower is cut off, you should have kind of a middle ball like this that goes right into your uh, garbage bucket there. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a look at your cauliflower and I'm gonna show you how big you want it because it does make a difference. If you make it too big for this, it's not gonna fit on the taco. That's about the size you want it. You don't want it any bigger than that. Now what I'm gonna do is as I cut these up, I'm gonna throw them right into my colander on the countertop. I do not wash it until the very end. And I do cut out any of the, you know, kind of yucky pieces. Cauliflower is not perfect. It grows from the earth, so it comes dirty and sometimes has imperfections, and I just trim those off, no big deal. Throw it into the colander to be washed once I'm all done. Now once this is battered and fried, it is gonna get a little bit bigger. So the little florets that we're cutting right now are gonna be a little larger, which is why I'm cutting them on the smaller side because they do expand with the batter. Now notice I'm not cutting these perfect. There is absolutely no perfect way to do this. I'm just trying to get them around the same size. You're going to have a little bit of variance here and that's not a big deal. I just don't want huge chunks. I'm gonna show you really quick is a couple different variations. So the size of the ones that are in my hand right now are the, the size we want for the tacos. However, when we do the series video on game day appetizers, you'll see that the larger cauliflower is the one that I'm gonna use for the boneless wings. So there is a distinct difference. It's a little bit bigger um, in size and so there is a variance there. So now I'm gonna take this cauliflower and I'm gonna wash it really, really well. And the reason why I'm doing this early on in the recipe is because you want your cauliflower completely dry before you start. So the best thing to do is to clean it and wash it early and let it just sit on the counter and air dry with a paper towel under it or a kitchen towel underneath it and let it dry for a while. Okay, let's make our batter. We're gonna start with two cups of gluten-free vegan flour. And to this flour, this is the secret ingredient. It is Perrier mineral water. The carbonation in this water is what gives this batter a really light and airy feel. I have tried this with regular water. It works, but it does not work as well. You're gonna want this a pancake batter type consistency. So not super thin, not super thick. So I'm gonna mix this around and you can see all the carbonation in there, that's what you want. You want this to be a light airy batter. And after I've placed two cans of the mineral water in, I'm realizing it's still a little thick and needs to be broken up more. So I am going to add a third can, but what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add it a little slower this time. I'm gonna do about half the can, mix it around, see if I need a little bit more, and then obviously add more if I need it. And I've decided I do need more, so I'm gonna go ahead and put the rest of that can in there. You wanna mix this really well and get it all incorporated in there. 
Typically two cups of flour will take three cans of the Perrier water. And as you can see here, three cans is exactly what we used. I would have four on hand just in case you might need a little extra. And if you need less, then use less. Now you are gonna wanna stir this with a whisk pretty vigorously. We wanna make sure we get all of the lumps out of our batter. We want it really smooth. And once we have the batter completely incorporated with the mineral water, we're going to add our ingredients. And the first ingredient I'm gonna add is a few shakes of Frank's Red Hot hot sauce. I put about four or five in there just to give it a little flavor. And now I'm going to add one tablespoon of onion powder, one tablespoon of garlic powder, going to add a teaspoon of paprika two teaspoons of smoked paprika this is a very important ingredient here because you want it to have a little smoky taste I'm going to do about a half a teaspoon of chipotle pepper powder and about a half a teaspoon of cayenne and about a half a teaspoon of sriracha powder. I have had people ask me if they can use the liquid sriracha. You certainly can. Um, just keep in mind that any liquid that you add to this batter once you get the right consistency will affect it. So if you're going to add liquid sriracha, I would add that prior to finishing off your three waters. And I'm gonna add about a teaspoon of adobo. I'm going to use Himalayan salt here and some fresh cracked black pepper, which you guys know by now I use very liberally in my recipes. I'm gonna get that all mixed around and it's gonna turn into kind of like a pinky oranges hue. That's what you're looking for. And again, you want that consistency to be like pancake batter. And just perfect for coating our cauliflower. You're just going to place that to the side and you're gonna let it rest for a little bit. Okay, now we're gonna start chopping the toppings for our tacos. And here I'm using five stalks of organic celery. And I'm going to slice those really, really thin and then I'm going to chop them pretty fine. I want tiny little chunks just to give a little added crunch to the top of the taco. Now, it's really important that you guys choose good ingredients. And the surprising comment that I get a lot on these tacos is that they love the center, but they're really surprised at how delicious the toppings are and how fresh and crisp they are. And the reason for that is because I use organic whenever I can. And there is a big difference between regular vegetables and organic vegetables. Um, so if you're able to use organic, please do so whenever you can. It's so vital with plant-based living to eat as much organic food as you possibly can can. And here's what your celery should look like, those little tiny bits that are just going to go right on top of the cauliflower. Okay, we're going to get started on our lettuce and I'm using about a half a head of iceberg lettuce here. You can use any kind of lettuce that you like, but iceberg I find to be really crispy on top and really fresh. Um, I'm going to slice this very thin into little shreds and then I'm going to chop those into little pieces from there. I am using organic iceberg lettuce here. You can choose to use the already bagged shredded lettuce. That's fine. I haven't found an organic version of that yet, but certainly if you need to save time, you can use shredded lettuce. Okay, chopping your cilantro is fairly easy. You're going to take a bunch of your cilantro and you want to get out the larger stems. We don't want huge stems. Little ones are okay, but those big ones, we want to kind of remove those. And once we get all of those out of our bunch of cilantro, then we're just going to run a knife through and we're going to lightly slice through it just to make it a little bit smaller pieces so that you're not getting huge chunks of cilantro in your mouth. Again, this is just an accent to the top of the taco, so you want it to just meld with the flavors. You don't want it to be the, the star of the show. Now, a really cool trick that I found works really well to keep your produce 
fresh longer in your refrigerator is when you have leftover cilantro and you have leftover lettuce what you do is you wrap it in paper towels so that it's nice and dry and then you place it into a ziploc bag and every couple days go in there and change your paper towels to new dry paper towels and what's great about this is it takes all of the moisture out which actually has your vegetables last almost double the time i've had cilantro last up to 20 days in my refrigerator which is completely unheard of i've had lettuce last up to 20 days in my refrigerator so this is a really great tip to be able to have your produce last a lot longer here I'm chopping the green onions for the top of the taco and I'm going to go ahead and slice them down the middle a little bit just to make them smaller bites and I did choose to chop the onion at the very end with this knife because I did not want the rest of my toppings to have that onion flavor I'm going to use a serrated knife to chop up baby grape tomatoes. These are also organic. And I'm going to take each tomato and slice them fairly thin, probably about four or five slices through each tomato, again, to make them small bits for the top of the tacos. Now that we have the prep work out of the way for our toppings on the tacos, we're going to get started on our buffalo wing sauce for our cauliflower. And for this, I'm going to utilize two sticks of gluten-free vegan butter. I know that seems like an awful lot, but in actuality, if you look at the sticks of butter, it really only equates out to being about a stick to a stick and a quarter of regular butter. Now, it's still a lot of butter, but we're going to have a lot of cauliflower to cover. And being born and raised in the home of the chicken wing, there is a couple different ways we eat our wings standard, and those are mild, medium, hot, or sometimes suicide. Our family prefers a more milder wing sauce, so that's what I'm making, and that's why I'm utilizing more butter and less hot sauce. If you want this recipe to be hotter, then you're going to utilize less vegan butter and more hot sauce. Some people just add their Frank's hot sauce to the buffalo wing sauce with the butter and go with that. But I like to add a few more ingredients to it just to kind of spice it up a bit. So to save some time, I'm going to go ahead and place those ingredients on the screen so that you can see everything that I'm adding to the Frank's hot sauce butter mixture. We're going to place in two teaspoons of onion powder, two teaspoons of garlic powder, two teaspoons of smoked paprika, a half teaspoon of cayenne, a half teaspoon of chipotle pepper powder, a half teaspoon of sriracha powder, juice of one half of a lemon, some salt and pepper to taste, and 12 ounces of the Frank's Red Hot Sauce, which is a half a bottle of the large 23 ounce bottle that you buy at the store. Once all of that is mixed together, you're going to turn your heat down to low and you can place this pot onto a back burner. I'm going to use gluten-free vegan corn tortillas for this recipe. And what makes corn tortillas really delicious is to toast them a little bit in a fry pan. So I've added just a drop of olive oil to this pan and moved it around with a paper towel just to get just a tiny little bit so it doesn't stick. And I'm gonna place in my tortillas and I'm going to warm them on both sides. As you can see, I can only fit about three corn tortillas in my pan, so I'm going to have to do these in batches. So what I do is I, I take a piece of aluminum foil and I set it next to my stove. And as I make these, I pop them into the aluminum foil and cover them so that they stay nice and warm. Okay, it's time to coat our cauliflower with the batter that we set aside earlier. Um, I'm going to place in probably about 10 to 12 cauliflowers into the batter and make sure that each cauliflower is fully battered before I put it into my oil. And previously to this, I've already turned my vegetable oil on and I am using vegetable oil. You can use canola or any other oil that you like, but it has to have a very high temperature ratio. Um, so I have my vegetable oil going on medium high to high heat already and I've had it on for quite a while to make sure that it's nice and hot when I place my cauliflower in. That's going to ensure one that it doesn't stick and two that it gets a really nice outer crispy layer which is what we're looking for. The fry time of your cauliflower is going to kind of vary a bit. Depending on how many cauliflower you put into the oil at the same time and if you're overcrowding the pot or maybe your oil possibly wasn't hot enough or it was too hot, 
Um, sometimes the variances just in stoves make a difference. So this isn't something you should walk away from. What you're looking for is you're looking for your cauliflower to flow to the top and you're looking for a deep golden brown. Once you see that, get those beauties out of there because they're ready to go. Once your cauliflower is out of the hot oil, I would place them on a rack inside of a oven tray and this allows the any extra grease to kind of leak down underneath so that your cauliflower isn't sitting in the grease and getting soggy this is going to ensure that it stays really nice and crispy and as soon as I get that batch out I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to salt them right away this is the time in which you want to salt the food because this is when it's going to be able to absorb anything that you're putting on top of it so now we're going to place our cooked cauliflower into a bowl and we're going to add a couple ladles of the Frank's Red Hot Sauce that we made earlier onto the top of the cauliflower and we're going to mix it around and make sure that it's coated really nice. Um, you want to do this really lightly because you don't want to break or bust the cauliflower. You want to keep it intact. You just want to make sure everything gets covered with that delicious sauce. And once that happens, I'm going to then take those back out of the bowl and I'm going to place them back onto the rack. The reason why I do that is because if I'm not ready to utilize these in the tacos right just yet, I want to place them back on the rack so again they stay crispy. If I leave them in the bowl soaking inside of the sauce, they're going to get soggy really fast. So as you're working in batches, this makes it really easy for you to keep everything crispy and hot. And just look at our fried cauliflower. Absolutely gorgeous. This is the part. I love the most. We're going to take one of our warm corn tortillas and I've found that the size of these cauliflowers and how we cut them that approximately three fit down the center of the tortilla. I find that three fits it absolutely perfectly so that's what I'm going to use. So let's take a warm corn tortilla and put three of our cauliflowers right down the center of our tortilla. Now what I like to do is have a little side of the Frank's hot sauce uh, mixture that I made because I like to just throw a little bit more on top. It just gives a little bit of moisture to the taco and just adds a little something extra to it. And then from there, I'm going to place on some of our gluten-free vegan blue cheese that we made earlier. And now I'm going to add a few chunks of our fresh celery. And I'm going to add some of our green onion that we chopped earlier. And some of our shredded lettuce. Some tomatoes. And a little bit of our cilantro. And that is your delicious taco. I'm going to go ahead and make the rest of these and then I'm going to show you what they all look like when we're done. And here you go guys, the absolute most amazing, delicious, buffalo style cauliflower tacos you will ever have in your entire life. I hope that all of you try this recipe. This is a fan favorite in our house and I promise you if you make these, you will never see any other taco the same way. I'd like to give a special thanks to Peter Simino, who is a special friend from Buffalo that provided me with all of the aerial photos of Buffalo for today's video. You'll be able to find all of his information linked down below in the description. Please check out his channel and also check out his website. He does some awesome aerial shots. Thank you so much, Peter. You're awesome. Thank you so much for watching this video and for supporting my channel. Please don't forget to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button and the bell next to it so that you can be alerted of any videos that I post. Please make sure you comment down below because I always want to hear from you. I spend a lot of my time on YouTube guys so I know your options for viewing pleasure is very plentiful. So the fact that you choose to watch my videos and support Nutrition Nation means a whole lot to me. So thank you so much for your support and I hope you love this video and I hope you love this recipe. I'll see you guys next time.